All right, young geometers. Uh, all right, the, we have a box here minus a hole. Looks kind of like um, some of the some of the problems we had review for the last test. All right, so surface area is the tricky one. Uh, and ask for that one first. Okay, fine. Uh, let's take um, the lateral area. You know what? I'm gonna call this the. Would this bother you? If I call this the base, let's call this front face the base because the lateral area is completely uninterrupted. Let's call this front face the base. All right, so I'm gonna do lateral area plus lateral area the big box plus uh, I have two of these shapes it's kind of like I'm just gonna draw two of this shape which is sort of like square minus square plus and then on the inside they tell me this is 12 by 12 so I have like these exposed surfaces on the middle I know they're not shaded but they are part of the exposed surface if you had to paint them you'd have to paint inside here too plus I'm gonna say lateral area of the hole now the hole has no basis, so I don't have to worry about that. I just have to worry about the ladder of the hole. So first of all, the hardest part about these is making this plan, I think, and make sure you know what you're supposed to be adding up. I'm adding on the lateral area of the big thing, which is these four big rectangles on the outside. The sort of I was gonna pick this up and stamp it towards it like towards the direction that's pointing at you right now. You'd have two of this this shape, and then I have the, the part inside the hole. And I think that's everything. That would be if I had to build this out of paper, I would have built everything that way. Lateral area, the big thing is the perimeter of it times its height plus two of these squares that are 32 by 28 minus 12 by 12 plus lateral area of the hole, which is the perimeter of it times its height. Its height is also 40. Uh, I kind of, I guess I could have done this all at once. The perimeter times height business here. I might as well do that. Perimeter of the whole thing is um, 32, if I use this as the base, 32 plus 28 plus 32 plus 28 times the height of that, which is 40. Okay, now we just have one huge calculation. Here I get 120 times 40 plus... 2 times 32 times 28 minus 144, I get 752. I can do all little parts of these at once. Plus 4 times 12 times 40 is 1920. Alright, 120 times 40 is 4800. Plus 2 times 752 is 5264. You know, I'll add 1920. I get 71.84, and I add those two up, and I get 1,000. I'm sorry, 11,984. See if I got that in my print key. All right, B. Uh, find the volume of the thing. The volume of the thing is kind of easy because all I got to do is find the volume of the whole block minus the volume of the hole, and that's that volume stuff just sort of works out nice. Big volume minus uh, volume of missing part. And the volume of the big part is just 32 times 40 times 28. And the whole is 12 times 12 times uh, 40. Great. 32 times 40 times 28 is 3, 5, 8, 4, 0. And 12 times 12 times 40 is 5, 7, 6, 0. 35840 minus that is 30080. Okay. Yeah, I was just looking at the thing on uh, the the old print copy. I didn't I didn't add in this uh, inside of the whole bit. And I think it's because it wasn't uh, it wasn't shaded in the original, but oh well. I got it right now. All right, in front of the Louvre is a impressive glass pyramid. I'm sure a lot of you've probably seen that. Um, the pyramid is 20 by 20. It's a square on the base. This is 20 by 20. People got really mad when they built that the first because it looked really modern and they had this nice big old castle-y kind of thing. All right. Uh, and this, the height is 24, so that means the straight up height in the middle is 24. Uh, determine, sorry, draw and label the diagram. Keep up units. Great. Oh, and find the volume. Volume here is one third air the base times height, which is not that bad. Whoops. So you can't copy. Uh, not that bad to determine. So that's 400 times 24 divided by 3. I get 3,200. Oh, yeah, proper units. Oops, this is meters. And we're 
we're talking volume. Okay. Surface area. We, actually, they just saw any glass. You wouldn't put glass on the floor. It's just, if you've ever seen it, it's, it's just got glass on the wall. So all I really care about is the um, lateral area. Half times the perimeter of the base. Perimeter of the base is 4 times 20, or 80. Then I need to know L. Well, L is right here. It's not something I know yet. But it's in a triangle with a 24 and a 12, and it's a hypotenuse. So this would be 12 because it's half the like the side here in a square. I have 12 and 24. I just got to figure out this side here. It's not pretty. Uh, 12 squared plus 24. Oh, wait. Why did I get 12? Wait a second. Hold the phone. It's not 12, and why did I just realize that in the middle of that problem? That's not, it's half of 20. Half of 20 is not 12. Moron. Half of 20 is 10. 10, 24. Oh, I can do that in my head. 10, 24, 26. It's a 5, 12, 13. All right, so that's a 26. Great. And there we go. So half times 4, that's 2. Times 20 times 26 is, 10, is 1,040. Okay. Number 6. Uh, so I'm to graph these points in here. Give me a sec. Okay, just figured you probably didn't want to watch me do that. All right, and here's the triangle. And man, I can draw straight lines. Look at that. Okay. Oh, I missed. Uh, all right. So there's my straight lines. Um, find the exact length of AC and BC. A to C, well, you know me. I like to draw this into a right triangle. Think of it that way. And here's, here's your a squared plus b squared equals c squared to try to figure that out. a to c this way goes from negative 5 to positive 5. That has to be 10. Uh, is it really t Oh, no, it's negative 4. Ooh, caught myself. That should be 9. From negative 4 to positive 5, that's 9. And from here up is 3. So I just go 9. Uh, here is 9 squared plus 3 squared. And I find the square root of that. It said exact, so I better leave that as... Um, Radicals. It's a square root of 108, which you can reduce. We can pull out a 6, because 36 was in there. It's 6 square root of 3. And BC is the same thing. I'm going to go straight down from there to there. From negative 1 up to 5, that would be 6. In sort of this direction here. And this is 2. So I'm going 6 squared plus 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. 6 squared is 32. 36, so this is the square root of 40 which I can pull a 4 out of that as a 2, and that's a 2 squared root 10. Great. Use, use slopes to prove that this is a right angle. That's a right angle, using slopes. OK, the slope here is rise over run. Now, it's really nice to have this 3 and this 9 in here, because now I can go, oh, yeah, the slope is 3 ninths, or 1 third. And the slope here, oh, it's rise over run. It's negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. And I know that the positive one-third, remember this rule, one-third times negative three, that equals negative one. And so, yes, it's perpendicular. What other way could you prove it's a right angle? Well, uh, I could find the distance from A to B. Does it say actually do it? It doesn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. I could find the distance from A to B, and then if I knew that this side squared plus this side squared equal this side squared, then I'd know I'd have a right triangle. And I have these two distances, so I'll go ahead and find this one too. The distance from A to B... A to B equals, I guess that's 3, and this is, oh, I've done this before, right? This is 11 from 7 down to 4, yeah. It's 3 squared plus 11 squared. And take the square root of all that. Yee, 121 plus 9 is 130. And that, I don't think that reduces nicely. Oh, you know what? I can find out if it reduces nicely. Whoops. Uh, the square root of 130. I don't think is nice. It's not. All right, so I'm sort of checking here. Does the square root of 108 squared plus the square root of 40 squared equal the square root of 130 squared? And it doesn't look like it does. All right, here's another great reason to tell you you did something wrong. 9 squared plus 3 squared is not 108. 9 squared plus 3 squared is 90. OK, I knew something was up here. The square root of 90 reduces a bit. I can pull out a 3 out from a 9. 3 squared 10. Well, look, square root of 90 squared. Again, I was wrong on the original sheet. Man, who's your math teacher? All right. Square root of 90 squared plus square root of 40 squared. Yes, equals the square root of 130 squared. So life is good. Check. All right. Good to have these checks in here so I can find my mistakes. 
All right, from the coordinates, um, find the coordinate point D so that I have a parallelogram. Well, you can kind of tell that's going to be kind of down in this zone. I want something parallel here and here and parallel here and here. It's going to be kind of down in this area. Well, um, you know it would have to be a right angle kind of over here. And realize this doesn't even look like a right angle because these, these squares don't look like don't look like they're square. Um, you can also think about this in terms of translation. If I take the t point C and translate it down here and get A, I could take the same translation of B and translate it the same path and get uh, point D down here. I kind of like that. Or take A and do the same thing with it that C does to get B. So I could take A and go down 6 and over 2. It's going to be right there. Uh, measure that however you want to sort of check me, but I could go down 6 over 2. I could take B and go down 3 back 9. I should get the same thing. But D should be at negative 2 negative 4. I could make some measurements. I could prove some slopes parallel. Uh, whatever you want. We'll, we'll figure that out um, and prove it to you any way you demand it. Alright. 7. If AB is 56, DC is 80, uh, AC is a diameter. That's good to know. Uh, if AC is a diameter, then I can actually, actually find out BD right away here. If this is 80, this would then be 100. This is 56. This must be 44. Just because I know this has to be 180. Uh, PB is tangent to circle B. Okay, so that's that's a 90 degree angle if I want to draw that in. Okay, the question is find measure angle 2. Um, 2 would have to be, because it intercepts these arcs of, you know, this bow tie thing here, intercepts the 80 and the 56. I take 180, sorry, 80 plus 56 and divide by 2. And I will get angle 2. Uh, that's 136 divided by 2, which is 68. Okay, that's going to be good to know. Can do this and write it in so I can see it. Might need it for something else. This is 68. This is 68. Okay. Uh, measure of angle P. Well, in P, uh, I don't. I, it's kind of tempting to say, well, P is the same as A because these are parallel. Well, I don't know if it's parallel, so I got to be careful. P is though. I do know it's um, these. It's the interception of these two arcs divided by two. 80 plus 44 is 124 minus 56 divided by two. Whatever that is, 124 minus 56 divided by 2, I get 34. Okay, great. And then measure of angle 1. Um, well, 1 is exterior to this triangle. I could figure it out that way. Oh, 1, I, no, wait. 1 is intercepting an arc. It's intercepting the, uh, the 124. I just have to take 124 divided by 2. And 124 divided by 2 is 62. So measure angle 1 is 62. So the question is, are these two things parallel now? Well, they can't be. I had a 62 and a 68. Uh, angle 1, measure of angle 1, let's say, is not equal to measure of angle 2, which means we do not have AIA or not parallel. All right, I got about two minutes left. Do you think I can make another? Yeah, maybe. Hot tub is filled being uh, at that moment. The tub is two thirds full, so this would have a height of two thirds of 1.8, which would be 1.2. Give the amount of water in the tub now. That would be the volume of this thing, which is pi r squared. R is 1.2. Be careful. Times the height. So really, I have 1.2 cubed times pi. 1.2 cubed is 1.2 to the third power. I can't get my calculator. 1.728 pi which is approximately equal to times pi 5.4 does it say 5 4 I don't know 5 4 3 uh, meters cubed and in part B how long will it take well I need if you think that two-thirds is down here there's one-third of it left so I need basically half of this still needs to go so I have 5.43 divided by 2 left which is about, divide that by 2, 2.71, I didn't round my calculator before I divided, 2.71, and I have to divide that by 0 0.03, because that's how many, uh, sorry, sorry, 0 0.3, because that's how many I, I get per minute. So divide that by 0.3, it's going to take about 9 minutes. Now, we had a problem like this about cost on the, on the, uh, test about there was some sort of material that cost so much money per square or cubic meter and people really got messed up by that um do it i mean really the 
the only way to end these problems is to well try dividing and try multiplying and see what happens. And if you uh, get a completely unreasonable answer, like you would if I accidentally multiplied here instead of divided, then look back at the end and go, oh wait a minute, that's that's not even close. We can talk more about that in class if you want. This video is about to expire on me. Uh, I will. I'm about to make the last one.